G'day everyone, day 15, RC circuits with voltage gain. Now, this might be a controversial one because when I say this to most people who've never heard of the concept, they just do not believe me that a simple RNC circuit can actually have voltage gain. I mean, resistors are fundamentally dissipative, capacitors have losses, so most people are, you know, it's at least have the intuition that a connect, some kind of topology constructed of only RNC can never have voltage gain. Um, I mean, the, I mean, most, I think, engineers who have some level of experience, especially with RF, if you say, oh, you can use inductors as well, would totally be happy in saying you can have voltage gain. I mean, a, you know, a resonant circuit can trivially multiply by the Q, right? Like a voltage that might be impressed upon it. But with R's and C's, it's actually less obvious that you can do this. But it is absolutely possible, and I can prove it to you. Also, it's something that you've probably seen everywhere i mean it, it any time that you have like delay plus addition you know or superposition this kind of thing can happen so the for example the frequency compensation in your you know solskite probe if this is misadjusted the peaking that you see on the edges of waveforms is actually pretty much the same kind of thing happening where you have you know some phase delay and, and accumulation over the divider in the um, probe that's causing that transient behavior so this is like what most people think of when they think of an RC network, right? So this this is a low-pass configuration. This is a high-pass configuration. You've probably absolutely seen a phase shift oscillator built using this. So you have some gain, and you can normally adjust the gain such that it's just enough to establish oscillation, which is, in other words, meeting the Barkhausen criteria. That's the same Barkhausen we had about magnetic noise, but he also did a bunch of work on network theory and feedback. And so... Here we have an active device and it has gain, right? So this particular thing is just a common emitter amplifier and you can adjust the emitter resistor such that, you know, eventually you have enough gain with all the other losses in the circuit to oscillate. Um, this topology is one that I've used before. You've probably seen it everywhere. Frequently, this last resistor is also the bias resistors, you know, at least at AC looking into this and the transistor's input impedance. And, you know, the output impedance here is not going to be particularly low, um, so you have to take that into account. But it's relatively straightforward to design this oscillator and it will work. But you're using voltage gain and actually inversion to get the phase shift and voltage um, gain to sustain oscillation. But you can do it another way. And you can have a circuit like this. So just looking at this, you might get the intuition that, oh, okay, so you've got some current coming in here and it, you can split it up and then run it into resistors that are all in series so that you you could perhaps you know if you squint at it argue that oh yeah it, these currents drop voltages across these resistors which add up and it could seem to be possible for that to actually have passive voltage gain obviously you cannot have power gain there, there's no free lunch there, there's no way of um you know cheating one of the most fundamental energy conservation laws in the universe but um, you can absolutely have the situation where the voltage and AC voltage here is smaller than the AC voltage that you get out here, at least into an, you know an, essentially an infinite impedance. Uh, if you don't believe me, do the circuit analysis and do the Bode plot, and you can definitely construct a circuit where you have you know magnitude of this over this is greater than one. Um, and to prove it, you can build a circuit like this. So this I actually did for practice. It's right here. You can see the topology, there's no cheating. I used a Darlington to get as close to possible as an emitter follower. So the emitter follower is kind of here how I can prove that I'm not cheating. The emitter follower absolutely has less than one gain of one. So the Barkhausen criteria for oscillation would not be valid if, you know, this is not, it's A, it's amplification factor is a little bit less than one, so it's like 0.99 something. Um, you can, again, work that out with the beta and whatever, and the, you know, the emitter current. But regardless, this could not oscillate with this style phase shift filter, right? Like, it just it just would never oscillate. You can try it, it won't work. Um, this If this was a FET, you probably wouldn't even need to use two transistors, but I used this because it's late and I was doing something simple. This, these two resistors are just here to establish a bias voltage. You, if I had two 9-volt batteries and I just made this, you know, minus 9, plus 9, and connected this to the join, that would have been fine as well, but I put a 10 microcapacitor here. Just, so this just defines a voltage that's setting 
you know, this emitter voltage, so there's two diode drops and it sets the current through this Epson emitter follower. But the output of the emitter follower is fed back using these capacitors into this network and you get this additive effect. It's actually an extremely weak additive effect, but it's real and it's sufficient for this thing to oscillate. So we can, this circuit's oscillating right now, like it's plugged into a battery. We can listen to it by, uh, I'll just put it here. I've got my probe. And if I disconnect the power, it stops oscillating. If I connect it again, you see that it takes a little while to start up. So we're only just meeting the Barkhausen criteria. So it actually takes a little while for the oscillation to start up. The the yeah, if you do the math, the shift through the, the gain through this network is very small, it's like 1.0 something. But it just makes up for the loss through the emitter follower. Um, and if you think about this in the frequency domain, you know, I'll spare you the math, but for those who might be interested in learning you know, about the S domain, what you're looking at is for oscillation, the Barkhausen criteria is essentially that your poles have to sit on the J omega, you know, the, the complex axis, uh, the imaginary axis. If they're in the positive sigma direction, like they're, they're over here in this half of the plane, then your oscillation will take off and explode. And eventually, what's really happening in a practical oscillator, even this kind of oscillator, is that the nonlinearity in the circuit, the, you, you start with your poles a little bit into the direction where you've got gain and the oscillation is, amp is growing. And you could hear that as it started up, it grows. And then the nonlinearities in the circuit pull it back. And obviously, like, it's not a single frequency oscillation going. There's distortion in the amplifier whenever you're talking about like nonlinearities. So those nonlinearities eat some of your gain at you know this particular frequency, and it balances itself so that the poles end up sitting directly on you know the um, complex, the imaginary axis. If your poles are on the other side, then what will happen is it'll decay, right? So this side, the the J omega part is negative, and it will um, sorry the sigma part is negative. So your your envelope of your oscillation, complex oscillation, complex sinusoid, if you prefer will decay away. Um, you can think about this in three dimensions, that like a projection of the three-dimensional representation of phaser, if you like, of this oscillation, you know, projected into, into one dimension or two dimensions, is basically a sine wave, right? You can think about it as two sine waves, one going in each direction, and they either increase or decrease, but I digress. Anyway, I thought this was an interesting little circuit. It's super straightforward to build and convince yourself that Absolutely, your intuitions about IC circuits can be wrong. There's no real... I mean, this obviously is a high-pass topology. You could totally build this the other way around. You can also build this with inductors and resistors. Um, but, you know, that's just a little bit more complicated to understand because capacitors are closer to being ideal than most inductors will ever be. But, and again, as I said, once you add L and C and R together then you have a much bigger toolbox and it's pretty straightforward and pretty intuitive as to why you can have voltage gain. But it's much less intuitive when you only have L and R or C and R. Alrighty, easy one for today. Um, we'll talk about something else tomorrow. Bye.